Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Espresso on S3. And it is a Relationship Advice Tuesday here. And this morning we are focusing on generational trauma within a family and how to create boundaries and also ask the question of when to cut ties. Joining us this morning, we have an incredible panel. We have Mimi Hewitt, who is a registered counselor, and two ladies from the Tiny Room Counseling. We have Tiny Room Counseling and Therapy. We have Lucinda Valentine, who is a lead therapist and Mandy Pretorius who specializes in adult therapy. Ladies, it's so great to have you all here. Thank, Thank you. you for joining you. us. I think this is a very important topic, topic to unpack because a lot of us, especially if you are going to therapy or dealing with all the traumas that has come, but can we quickly characterize how trauma manifests in each person? Because we all process and handle trauma differently. Mimi, I'll start with you. Yes, you know what, um, Dan Siegel, we were talking about it on the way here, Dan Siegel had this hand model where he explained how our brain actually works. So if you use your hand like this, this top part is your prefrontal cortex, that's your thinking brain. That's where all the logical thinking and processing happens. And then on the inside here, this is your emotional brain, your feeling brain, and then you have your, um, your dinosaur brain the autopilot. Mm. So when trauma happens, this part flips. <laughs> so we stop thinking when trauma happens and we go into autopilot and then we go into fight, flight or freeze mode. Mm. Um, and that's usually the reaction for everybody. It doesn't matter what kind of trauma you go through, the body reacts the same way. Um, and it's, it makes it very difficult for people to think straight. Mm. And then obviously afterwards, this part still needs to function. So this part still needs to process what happened. And that's why we often get flashbacks or dreams about the trauma. Um, because that's the brain's way of trying to, to process and trying to understand what happened. And, and what happens when we don't address the trauma and we leave it untreated? What, what then happens? Well, I'm going to speak from a tween and teen therapy perspective because I see predominantly tweens and teens. Um, and I see the kind of starting point or the origin of how uh, relational trauma or trauma in, in tweens and teens build up because Mandy sees our adult clients. And for me, I've seen... Um, youngsters who don't maybe have their brains developed at that point, how they experience their traumas. And a lot of their parents will, will think that, oh, it's just a small thing. You know, they, they need to get over it, but they're 10. Um, but if we get on their level and we see that, you know, when they change schools or when they um, have, you know, their friend has moved overseas, how that relationship coming to an end or um, any sort of incident that's happened or um, a, a prolonged incident, because obviously there's a few layers in that, in that trauma, um, how that child actually responds. If that is left unattended to yeah. or not intervened or any sort of assistance, when they get into their later teens or early 20s, Monday ends up sitting with that adult client and we can already see that that trauma has compounded and we see it as gaps and blind spots, you know, and blockages. Um, they will live a healthy life um, for, for many years, but we can see that they haven't thrived because of certain traumas that have happened already grade two, mm -hmm. sitting grade two and grade three already, where the traumas that we would think are really Oh no, they, it's, I've just got a sensitive child. No, they've actually experienced it as a trauma. It wasn't addressed. And then there's obviously those repercussions afterwards. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 Mandy, perhaps from your, you know, your adult clients that you, or patients that you see and counsel, what impact does that have for these adults that then start having kids and, and the, they never address their own traumas and now they have to raise kids? Have you perhaps had patients like that? Yeah, no, um, definitely, Zoe. You know, if I look at um, the clients that we see, you can almost always, um, you know, pull it back um, to some form of trauma that happened at some stage. And if it's not addressed um, during childhood um, or, you know, as they're growing up, becoming teenagers, we end up with adults that, you know, sometimes find themselves at a point in life where they actually don't know who they are anymore mm. um, and they're sitting with a lot of self-worth issues mm. um, you know understanding um, themselves and then also you know going into a relationship 
we then start to see, you know, the relationships, um, you know, presenting with some difficulties and problems. And then having kids, um, if you not, if you didn't have that secure attachment as a child, and you didn't have the positive role models in your life, mm. it's very difficult if you didn't get therapy or guidance, you know, on your way, um, to be that positive role model to your children and to, um, you know. To, to, to teach them the skills that they need um, in order to stop that cycle of generational trauma. Mm. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to stop that cycle. When trauma happens, it doesn't just happen to the victim, but people around it. So mm. let's look at this in a family setting. <clears throat> and Mimi, perhaps you can give some advice here. When trauma happens, how does the family, those who need to support the person that had an incident or something happen to them, how do you support those around the people that need the support as well? Yeah, you know what, um, there is actually such a thing as secondary trauma. So that's the people who, were, who weren't necessarily directly involved in the trauma, but just hearing someone else's story can actually also traumatize you. Yeah. So um, professional help is needed. Um, we want to encourage parents, we want to encourage family members to surround that person. Yes, give the support, yes, give the understanding and the empathy, but please don't just try and fix it. Um, get them to the professionals so that they can work through that process that is needed for the, 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 the trauma to get resolved. Mm. Otherwise, unresolved trauma, if the next thing happens, it just gets layered on top of the previous thing that wasn't resolved. So it creates a bigger problem if not resolved sooner rather than later. Definitely, it definitely does. And I mean, I suppose something could also be said in a family environment, there's always drama, traumas and, and instances that takes place. But what if you need to support your partner? How can you support them without it affecting you? <coughs> Is it even possible to support someone through a trauma without, it, without you taking on mm. the secondary trauma? Well, for me, I, I deal with quite a few tweens and teens, and obviously I can really only speak from that perspective, and Mandy can, can come in on the adult perspective in a minute. But I've noticed that a lot of my tweens and teens are in home environments where you know, their parents are very volatile, and it's very difficult for that influence to be shut off. Um, through our process, our therapy process, we show them or we, we, we guide them on how to, we call it a filter where there's small holes and big holes on how much you let in and how much you let out. Um, and that they have the permission to, I don't like to use the word boundaries, it's overused at the moment, but how they are allowed to boss their lives and CEO their lives on powerful, confident choices and decisions on how much goes in and how much goes out. Um, but at the same time, it's difficult when you're in that home environment daily to not be affected by a very angry mom. You know, a very um, a dad that is extremely on edge, or maybe you know is is drinking, or is going through a lot of um, trying to recover from trauma on his own. Mm. Um, I find that it's a 50/50 at the moment, where um, half of my parents are the um, I don't like the word problem either, but are the the challenge or a big blockage to seeing my tweens and teens thrive. But that's only 50%. The other 50% are kids actually just going through a lot of stuff. But I find that the one, the 50% where the parents are a negative influence on this child's growth or development um, or thriving, as we say, it is. Um, to the point where I work with a lot of self-harming and, and suicidal tweens and teens that it has to that extreme that effect But I say to a lot of parents let your child come through our process so that they can have at least some control mm. as to that knowledge of it doesn't all happen to me I can to some degree even at a tween or a teen age respectfully under their roof create a life that is at least manageable and we can't change everything, we can't fix everything, yeah. but then obviously we walk a journey with the parents also on you know, adjusting a few things, transforming a few, few things, improving things and, and, and hopefully bringing an environment that's not so volatile. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Well, we will come back. We have a lot to unpack. Mimi Lucinda, Mandy, don't go anywhere. We've got more to unpack around our topic today around generational trauma. So if you would love to be part of this conversation, feel free to WhatsApp us on 063-408-8863. It's my feel-good
Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast show and you are just in time as we're continuing our conversation with Mimi Hewitt, who is a registered counsellor and two ladies from the Tiny Room Counselling and Therapy, Lucinda Valentine, who is the lead therapist, and Mandy Pretorius, who specialises in adult therapy, as they give us advice on dealing with trauma in a relationship. Now, Mandy, I'm going to ask you this question because when it comes to family ties, there are often times where you need to make that cut, and I know it's sometimes easier said and done. Mm. But perhaps for you, who who you know, ther um, who who give therapy to adults, have you seen the, the positive impacts to that person cutting out a negative family member? Um, yes. So you know, um, we like to look at it, um, you know, as gradually um, exposing yourself less. And decreasing the freak, you know, the frequency of seeing that other person, um, but also, you know, um, focusing on the individual, um, you know, person, and to realise the strength within you. And I always say to clients, you know, it's okay to sometimes love somebody from a distance. Mm. It doesn't mean that you have to. Um, um, because it's a family member or a, a close friend, um, that you have to continue with a relationship where in, in, in the end it is toxic. And sometimes breaking free from that, mm -hmm. um, you know, allows the person to, to stand on the side and look in and to, be, you know, then identify um, all the different areas where this actually impacted my life so negatively mm. um, and then um, you know continuing on that journey um, it enables the the person you know breaking free from that relationship to really thrive in the end and be able to say that I'm living my best life and I'm I'm living an authentic uh, authentic life not pretending yeah. um, you know to to be in a happy relationship where it's not and it's not a case of you cutting it off immediately. Like you mm. said, it is a process. Mm. There is mm. there is a method to it. Yeah. But we got some f comments that came through from our Expresso family on social media. So let's take a look at the first comment that came through. This came through from Dumi, who says, Good morning, Expresso team. Yes, my relationship with my mom influenced my relationship with others. It depends on who are the others. Hence, the influence may be positive or negative. I taught myself that I won't take it, um, someone because someone let me otherwise so uh, I won't let them um, I won't hate someone because someone has let me otherwise so they don't allow someone else's opinion to influence their opinion on others I want to ask you Mimi cutting ties is never easy but when how when do you reach that point where you need to consider cutting ties with someone you know when a relationship becomes toxic when it becomes a, a matter of I'm I'm giving all the time, but I'm not necessarily getting anything positive back from this relationship. That's a good sign that it's not a, a healthy relationship. Um, but what we also need to take into consideration is that process is almost the same process as when you lose someone through death, that grief process mm. that you need to go through. You, just because the relationship was unhealthy doesn't mean um, it didn't mean something to you. So it's okay to be sad about losing that person or even if you are the one choosing to step away. Mm -hmm. You will still feel the, the shock, the denial, the depression, the anger um, and it's normal and it's important to allow yourself to go through that. And also not to forget the process of forgiveness mm -hmm. which also needs to, to take place. We need to choose to let that person go yeah, um, and choose to not hold on to the bitterness, the hatred, the anger, just like that person said. Yes, I, well, <clears throat> thank you, thank you for that. We got another comment, so let's just quick take a look at our second comment that came through. This one came through from Saliswa that says, good morning guys, yes, the relationship I have with my parents influenced my relationships with others in a way that I don't allow other people to dictate whether, whatever happens in my life. I always put myself forward, but make sure I don't stamp on anyone. Mm. Now. This is going to bring me to Lucinda. You deal with tweens and teens, and often for them, especially given that age bracket that they're in, it's often difficult to cut ties with certain family members. Or f what do you do in that instance when it is a family member that that you know that they they 
they need to actually have some distance between. What I find a lot of the time, and even from a young age, it's not just with our adult clients, is the sense of obligation. Because mm -hmm. you hear blood is thicker than water, you know, you, 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 it's your family, it's your parents. Um, I see it happening even in those tween and teen years where there's that guilt of, I don't have a connection with my parents. We have nothing in common. Mm -hmm. You know, the connection is low. It's not a very strong connection. Um, trying to force things. So I find that sense of obligation and guilt. And it's coming from a lot of your own individual blockages and, and, and blind spots where these youngsters don't realize that they don't necessarily have to have the strongest connection with their parents if there's not a lot to be relate, you know, there's not a lot of relating going on in the home. Um, I just want them to understand that it might grow with time, but we don't believe in cutting people off. We hear that so often, oh, just cut them off, just cut them off. There's a grief process that also needs to take place. We can't just cut people off all the time. You might see them every week at work or at school or, you know, it's, it's that you're living with them and obviously these youngsters are living with their parents. Um, is how do you manage that frequency healthily, but it's normally an individual relationship with yourself. If that's solid, mm. you give yourself the permission to be at the front of the queue in your own life. Mm. And these youngsters can do it already respectfully under their parents' roofs, but they can't take on their parents' stuff. So a lot of the time they're forcing a relationship with their parents. Their parents have their own blockages. There's a limitation to that kid having a strong connection with their parents. We encourage parents to go on their own journey alongside, because we have another therapist, so we don't talk about each other or t about our clients. Um, so I see the tweens and teens, and we encourage the parents to come through their own therapy process because when two people are on their own journey mm. as humans, regardless of their age, and are addressing their gaps, blind spots, and, and blockages, you see naturally, and we've seen it time and time again, that that connection with those parents do get stronger. And yes, exampling is a big deal. If the parents are not the healthiest in themselves, that exampling is not great, and it causes that distance. Mm. Um, but I say don't cut people off. Lower your frequency. Those holes of small to big, how much you let out, how much you let in, can start at a young age already. And you can boss your life, be the CEO, be on top of the mountain of your own life at a young age already. Mm. My parents see them as my baby, my little child. Mm. It's always yeah. a complex oh. one, but it's so wonderful that the three of you have joined us today. So thank you for sharing your wisdom, your expertise, and of course your insight on, on this topic. And I hope it helped you to also just have a look at some of the dynamics in your family. Hopefully you were able to identify what needs to, you know, perhaps put a bit of distance in or work on that relationship so that there isn't that much distance. Well, I hope this conversation helped you. Let's head on over to the kitchen.